Hi students, I am Priyanka Jain and I am a verified educator at the Unacademy Plus platform. You can watch several of my plus classes. Okay, I have soon started a catalyst batch course for the whole inorganic chemistry. You will see whole the inorganic chemistry in this course and this is for the upcoming June 2022 exam of the CSIR net as well as for the get exam okay so if you want to see different of the my lectures different courses you can see on the unacademy take the subscription of the unacademy and if you want to see the free classes there are also several free classes every month i take several free classes you can watch these free classes without taking subscription so for this you will have to uncode my code my code is priyanka jain 10 by clicking on this code you will get the link for my classes. Thank you. Hi students. Welcome in chemistry classes. And here we are seeing another important unit. That is acid and bases and the non aqueous solvents. Okay. So we are today starting with the acid and bases. The concepts of the acid and bases. The first of the important concept is of the Arrhenius. Actually according to Arrhenius. Acids are the substances that gives H plus ions in the aqueous solution okay any substance that is giving h plus ions in aqueous solution it means when it is dissolved in water if it is giving h plus ions or if it is giving s3o plus ions okay then it is known as the acid for example scl if we are dissolving it it is dissociating its h plus plus cl minus so it is giving h plus ions it means it is acid similarly h2so4 SCLO4 all are acids okay another important def definition is base according to Arrhenius any substance that is giving OH minus ions in aqueous solution is acting as the base okay so according to this concept NaOH will act as the base in the aqueous medium because it is dissociating as Na plus OH minus. Okay. Similarly, MgOH whole twice. This is also a base. Okay. NH4OH. This is another base. So, this is the definition according to Arrhenius. Now, the next important concept is of the Bronsted and Lorry. According to Bronsted and Lorry concept of acid and bases, an acid is defined as the substance which has the tendency to donate the protons. Okay that has the tendency to donate protons to any other substance okay it means it is not necessary that the substance will be an aqueous medium it is not compulsory that an acid will give the h plus ions in the aqueous solution any any substance if it is giving the protons to any other substance then it is acting as the acid okay similarly a base Okay, a base is a substance that is accepting, that has the tendency to accept the protons from any other substance. Okay, so acid means the substance that is donating the protons and bases are the substance that are accepting the protons. So, according to this concept, the acids and bases may be molecular these may be cationic or these may be anionic for example if you are seeing the acids molecular species okay if you are seeing the molecular species then scl h2so4 hno3 and sclo4 ch3coh and H3PO4. These all are acting as the acid. Why? Because these are donating the protons. Similarly, cationic species. The cationic species also gives the H plus ions like NH4 plus, Al, H2O, whole 6 plus 3. Okay. So, these are also acting as the acids. Okay. Now, see the bases. Bases are again any substance that may be molecular like NS3 that can accept the proton okay the important thing is that these are accepting the protons okay similarly hydrazine n2h4 amines these all are 
proton acceptors okay and cationic species like fe h2o whole 5 oh plus 2 this is also acting as the base because it can accept the proton and the anionic species anionic species like cl minus br minus oh minus hso4 minus these all are acting as the bases and there are some more substances that behaves both as the acid as well as the bases so the substance that are acting both as the acid as well as as the base are known as the amphoteric for example water water can accept the proton or it can donate okay so it is showing both the acidic as well as the basic behavior okay now there is one more important term that is conjugate acid and base pairs what is conjugate acid and base pair we know that a acid is donating the protons okay after donating the proton it is converting to a base okay and base base whenever is accepting the proton it is converting to acid okay so every acid will have a conjugate base and every base will have a conjugate acid okay so this acid and this base that differentiate by a proton are known as the conjugate acid and base pair for example suppose if you are seeing ch3cooh okay it is treated with h2o it means it is treated in aqueous medium so this is behaving as the acid okay it is giving the proton okay so now this h2o is accepting this proton so it is converting to h3o plus while this ch3coh is converting to ch3coo minus okay now you can see this ch3cooh has donated the proton so it is acting as the acid while this h2o has accepted the proton so it is acting as the base now you can see after the donation of the proton this has converted to ch3coo minus so this will be called the conjugated base if this is acid 1 then this will be called the base 1 okay and if it is called the base 2 then it will be called the acid 2 it means this acid and this is its conjugated base similarly this is the base and it is its conjugated acid it means each acid has a conjugate base and each base has a conjugate acid and one more important thing is that every strong acid every strong acid will have a weak conjugated base and similarly each strong base will have a weak conjugate acid okay so see here if we are seeing the acidic strength we can now order the acidic strength as well as the base strength if we know the acidic strength okay if we know about the acidic strength then can then we can find out the conjugate base strength see here acid strength the SCLO4 is acting as the highest strength acid okay then comes H2SO4 then comes HI then comes HBr, then comes HCl, then HNO3, then H3O+, then HSO4-, then H3PO4, then HNO3, CH3COOH, then H2CO3, then H2S, then NH4 plus, then SCN, and then H2O, and then NH3. This is the decreasing order of the acidic strength of the acids. Okay. Now, if you have to find out the conjugate base strength, okay, if we are seeing the conjugate base of these acids and we have to find out their strength then this will be the reverse of this acid strength why because we know that every conjugated acid has a weak conjugate base okay so this is the strongest acid hclo4 is the strongest acid so its conjugate base clo4 minus will be the weakest base okay 
this will be the biggest vase then you can make from here just you have to remove a proton from here okay you have to remove the proton from here and you are getting the base strength so the base strength will be the reverse exactly reverse of the acidic strength like this okay so if you know the simple ratio simple order of the acid strength then you can find out the strength of the conjugated bases like this then cn minus then oh minus and nh2 minus now you can see that nh3 here is the nh3 is the weakest acid and now nh2 minus is the strongest base okay so nh3 and its conjugate base is nh2 minus so the acid strength is wherever weaker then the basic strength will be stronger okay this is the simplest concept of bronze strength and lowry concept okay okay now we see the Lewis concept of acid and bases according to the Lewis the acids acids are the electron pair acceptor any substance that is accepting the electron pair okay is acting as the acid okay similarly bases bases are the electron pair donor okay so any substance that is donating the electrons okay will act as the base okay so this was the simplest definition acids are the electron pair acceptor and bases are the electron pair stoner okay so if we are seeing the Lewis acids these are called the Lewis acids okay so what are the properties of Lewis acids all the cations all the cations have tendency to accept the electrons okay all cations will have the tendency to accept the electrons so they are acting as the acid it means all the cations will act as the acid second point is small cations small cations means like H plus like lithium plus like Be plus 2 these all act as strong Lewis acid. It means the smaller cations will act as the strong Lewis acid. Why? Because they have the tendency to accept the electrons from the strong bases. Okay. These are accepting the electrons from the strong bases. So these are acting as the strong Lewis acid. Similarly, the larger cations. Larger cations means Na plus, K plus or Ca plus 2. These all are acting as weak Lewis acid because these are accepting the electron pairs from the weak bases. Okay. Next point is higher the charge on the cation. If the cation has higher charge, then it will have more tendency to accept the electrons right if it is having the higher charge higher positive charge then it will have the low electron density so it will have the more tendency to accept the electrons okay so these will act as the more acid okay this will act as the hard acid right so we can say fe plus 3 if we are comparing the Fe plus 3 and Fe plus 2, then Fe plus 3 is having the higher charge. So, Fe plus 3 will be stronger acid than Fe plus 2. Similarly, Sn plus 4 will be stronger acid than Sn plus 2. Okay. Next thing is that the electron deficient compounds. Electron deficient compounds means whenever there is the less electrons as they, as they required by the valence shell like bf3 like alcl3 these are having the less electrons than they require for completing their octet okay these are having the less number of electrons so these are the electron deficient compounds so these all compounds act as lewis acid 
Why? Because they have the less number of electrons and they need it. Okay. So these are behaving as the Lewis acids. For example, if we are treating BF3 with F minus, then it is forming BF4 minus. It means it is accepting the electron density. Okay. Similarly, the molecules in which central metal have vacant d orbital okay if they are having the vacant d orbital then they can expand their octet okay they will have the tendency to accept expand their octet they can expand their octet so these are also behaving as the lewis acid for example sif4 SNCl4, SF5, SO3. These all are acting as the Lewis acids. Okay. For example, you can see if you are taking SBF5. Okay. If you are treating it with the F minus, then you are getting SBF6 minus. Okay. So any substance that is accepting the fluoride ion. Okay. Or that is accepting the electron density that is acting as the Lewis acid. Okay. Okay. One more so, what are the Lewis spaces? Lewis spaces are the substances that have the tendency to donate electrons. Okay. All the substances that have the tendency to donate the electrons will act as the Lewis space. Okay. So, in general, they should have a high electron density that can be donated. So, what type of compounds will act as the Lewis spaces? For example, all the anions. which have tendency to donate electron pair okay they will act as Lewis as Lewis space okay all the anions that have tendency to donate electron pairs okay for example OH minus this is having negative charge Cl minus okay Br minus. These all are having the negative charge. It means these are having the electron density. So they can donate this electron density to some other substance. Okay. So they are acting as the Levy spaces. Greater the charge, stronger will be the Levy space. Okay. Similarly, molecules having lone pair of electron they also act as Levy space all the molecular species that are having the lone pair of electrons that can be donated will act as the Levy space it like ns3 this is acting as the Levy space okay all the amines that are having the electron density that will act as the Levy space right similarly alkenes and alkynes okay alkenes and alkynes these are having the pi electron density okay these are having the pi electron density and this density can be donated to the substances like metals okay these can act as the ligands so these are acting as the Lewis spaces okay so it means now there are categories Lewis spaces can be anions can be molecules or these can be alkenes or alkynes that are having the pi electron density so these all substances are acting as the Levy spaces okay so this is the general concept about the bronstein and lorry about the Levy's acid and bases and about the arrhenius concept in our next lecture we will see what is the hard and soft acid and bases concept and what is the solvent system concept okay and then we will see about the non aqueous solvents like liquid ammonia light liquid hf okay so meet you in the next video with some more topics thank you